Now Habersham is proud to sponsor interviews with the candidates for the May 24th political primaries. We hope by viewing these personal interviews, you'll get to know the candidates who will be making decisions that impact your life, your family, and your livelihood here at the local and state level in Georgia. We hope you'll vote May 24th, and we hope you'll be more informed in that process by hearing from the candidates themselves in these one-on-one -on -one interviews sponsored by Now Habersham. This is now Habersham, and we're visiting with Roy Benefield, who is a candidate for Senate, uh, Georgia Senate District 50. And welcome to the Now Habersham program. Thank you, sir. Let's start off with your education. Tell us a little bit about the formal education you've had in your life that might prepare you uh, to have the Senate seat representing us. Okay. I graduated from Decula High School in 1964. After graduation, I immediately went into the Marine Corps 10 days later, spent four years in there, and went to Vietnam, Cuba came out and nobody wanted to hire me, so I was, saw in the paper that 86.7% of the police officers at that time were ex-military. So I said, well, maybe that's what I should try. And I went down to State Patrol and I was too short and too light, but he had directed me to DeKalb County. Mm -hmm. I went down there and applied and went through the testing process and was one of seven that was hired that year. And I stayed there for over 27 and a half years. I left early, I retired early, in order to go to Bosnia and train their police, and in Kosovo for the State Department working within the UN. Came back home, and during the time that I was in the police department, I went to Gainesville Junior College for two years, and then I transferred over to Bernal for the third year in criminal justice. Now, over these many years that I've been involved with the military, the police department, the work over in Bosnia and Kosovo, I have handled lots of situations. And in my time as a police officer, I went to every school and program that they would allow me to go to that was appropriate for, and I must have 150 different schools and classes. I constantly have tried to improve my own knowledge by reading and by talking with people, and that's where I'm at. Great. Let's talk a little bit about um uh, the, the, the district here, uh, District 50, what do you think is a, a problem or a challenge we might face that might be one of the first things you might want to focus on if elected as state senator? Well, I think all of us have the problem of unemployment and our school systems. These are extremely important to every state and every region, and I don't think we're doing very well, but it seems like we fight each other. Uh, Stevens County offers less than Franklin County. You don't have to pay as much. We'll give you an extra five years. And the businesses have learned that they can rob us, basically, and pit us against each other. And that's not just counties and counties, but it's state versus state. Now, we, we need to work better with all of this. We need to work our regional and our county commissioners should be working harder with each other to set a, a, a guideline limit that we're not going to go below this and yes we're going to follow up you know they they tell us that we're going to bring 400 jobs in here well you see four cars parked out in front of their building for months before you start seeing six and then 12 but there's no 400 people can get there and 12 cars but we don't go back and make them pay taxes and after the 20 years or 25 that they have wrestled out of us, they leave and leave the building vacant. Here we are, got to start all over again, giving tax-free industry. Mm -hmm. We need to look at that and I think stop it, period. And you have to work better with each other. Now the commissions they have, they're, they, they talk good talk, but I haven't seen the results so far. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about an issue. Uh, okay, and uh, this topic would be about immigration. Uh, over the last 16 years, both the U.S. House and the U.S. Senate uh, at different times have approved certain kinds of immigration policy changes for the country. And then, as you know, uh, the president enacted four years ago what's called deferred action, which is not amnesty. It just protects young people, children, high school schoolers from being deported if they've committed no crimes and they stay in high school. It basically is a two-year period that protects them while they're uh, here uh, as being brought here illegally and not having a choice in the matter of being brought here. So 
Most Republicans and most Democrats agree we need some kind of immigration sense, a bill of some kind, and often the response is from, uh, let's say the Republican Party is, we're not signing any bills till we build a fence. Um, and that may or may not happen. And so my question to you is, uh, being in a county and surrounding counties of Senate 50, which has a very large Hispanic uh, workforce, in fact, some of our interest industries would just disappear if we didn't have many of these people working for us. What is your thought about immigration uh, and Georgia? And we've also had a legislature that's passed laws that makes it even difficult for these kids to go to college. Um, and so, I mean, they can't even enroll at any cost, even if they have a 4.0. What do we need to do in Georgia about immigration, or do we just let the problem sit? It's going to have to be answered and look and solved. And what would you think? But you what can't just keep sitting around yeah. waiting. But remember, I told you I was a police officer. Uh -huh. Subsequently, if you look at my card I gave you, I respect the law, and I don't know what part of illegal people don't understand. <laughs> yeah. I've got to tell you, as long as you make it seem like it's acceptable, it's not illegal to those coming. And were I down there you'd have to throw me back across every time you caught me over here because I've seen the difference. And that's the problem. You keep making it sound like, well, if you can get here before we shut that border, <laughs> then we'll let you stay. Yeah. I don't believe we will. I don't believe we can. Mm -hmm. Now, I remember a story about the goose that laid the golden egg somewhere around the third or fourth grade. And in my opinion, America is that goose. And illegal immigration is that old woman. Mm -hmm. What happens when America is no more? This world is gone. Sure. Now, I went to Bosnia and I went to Kosovo and I saw police officers and military and people from all over the world. And I can, came home and told my family, look, America's holding this thing together and we're stretched out of the limit. Mm -hmm. If we let go, I ain't, there's no telling what's going to happen to this world. Well, look where we're at, $19 trillion. Now, that's not in Georgia, but we're a part of the United States. Mm -hmm. And in Georgia, the people here, that they, they should know that if it's illegal, you need to start making plans to get legal. Mm -hmm. And don't be protesting your rights. Mm -hmm. and That's not going to help you. Mm -hmm. What will help you is to work with Americans mm -hmm. and try to figure out and agree how can we assimilate all this. We so, can't So you think on. there is a, a need to come up with an answer for it? There has to be. Yeah. For, in Hammersham County, I, I don't know what the percentage of legal and not legal is, but we have a lot of people here on legal visas to work here in our county. In fact, probably vast majority of them are. Uh, but if you took these people out who are not permanent residents and are not citizens, the tax base would be in fact impacted tremendously. So would the funding of the schools because they're we're paid by the student. Uh, and our industry would be, suffer greatly. But you do believe we should find an answer for it and not just continue on this 16-year uh, journey <laughs> without any change. It's, it's unending until yeah. we do address all of the issues. Mm -hmm. Now, oh, I don't know if you ever heard Neil Bortz or not, oh, but course. he used to be simple. He's a simple-minded man. He said, if the water's leaking, you cut the water off. Well, yeah, yeah. well that's what's leaking is the illegals getting here. and the, invitation that we're giving them by saying, well, we can't do this, we can't. The worst thing I irritates me is when one of our professional politicians says, we can't do this. What do you mean you can't secure America? That's your job, number one. That's their job. And yes, I, as a Republican, I am fed up with all of them up there, just about. The House said, give us the House. We gave them the largest house that's ever been in American history. They did nothing. Then they said, you got to give us the Senate. You got to give us the majority in the Senate. We gave them the majority in the Senate. What did they do? Nothing. Mm -hmm. Now they're saying, we got to have the president. Well, the last time we saw all three legs of that stool under one policy, we got Obamacare. And I don't think that's a very good system. Now, my thing is saying it's Obama said if you liked your doctor, you could keep him. That wasn't true. If you liked your insurance company, you can keep it. That wasn't true. I'll say if you like the government you got now, you can keep it. 
You just stay home, do nothing. Don't get involved, don't pay attention, don't, don't hold the candidates and the office holders accountable and you'll have the government you got. And we'll get nowhere because those in power don't want to rock that boat, even though it might be what's necessary to get it to go on so you can fish down where the fish are instead of sitting here in the log. They don't want to do it because they might not get elected again. Let's talk about uh, energy. Uh, and, and this is important in the state if you get elected to this position. Uh, I have a, a child who's an attorney in another state and about two years ago he responded to the local power company's uh, uh, offer to engage in putting solar panels on his roof, which he did. And as it turns out, a year and a half, almost two years later now, he's not only paying for every uh, kilowatt that he uses every month, including the winter time, and this is near Canada <laughs> in the U.S., but he's also getting up to seventy, a hundred dollar check back every month. Uh, that has uh, not worked well in Georgia. We have the major power company here in our state who's really done nothing to encourage power users, meaning residential customers, to develop solar power which is free other than the equipment to do it. And just recently though in our county we had Haversham Electric, HEMC, start a program where we can buy as customers a solar panel elsewhere in the state and then uh, release it and then we benefit from the, the power generator from that one single panel which is reflected as a credit on our uh, electric bill. Now that seems to be a really positive first step. But if you're elected and you're in the Senate, what would you do to encourage industry like Georgia Power to, uh, to work out getting free energy from the sun as opposed to saying we don't want to participate in that? Well, you're right. I've seen a good many of that up in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're as more mountainous than we are, mm -hmm. but they're still putting them up on the side of the mountains. And I, I would assume that because they're, they're growing in numbers that it's working. Mm -hmm. And I can't see how it can be a detriment to us. But I can remember when Georgia Power told us we need to cut our lights off, we were, or they were going to have to buy more equipment and do more and raise the rates. Well, America, the, Georgia responded. And they come back and said, we didn't mean cut off all your lights, you know. <laughs> and then they went to the Public Service Commission and asked for an increase. Right. Of course, they didn't get it. Yeah. So then they tried to, a, a real heavy campaign, turn your lights back on, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they're a private company. Private companies should do what they do, try to make money for their shareholders. Public Service Commission should do what it does, try to look out for us, the people, mm -hmm. and so should the senators and the Congress. I, uh, I would have to work within the system to find out exactly what's going on there. I don't know much about that. Mm -hmm. That's not in my field of background, but I do remember a lot of things. And I know that if you can't work together, you can't get anything done. But it sounds like you like the idea of letting citizens have a hand in generating some electricity uh, to help their own personal power bills and probably give back uh, to the whole system and wide. I mean. They should. They should be able to, and, and they should be able to afford it. Mm -hmm. But you have to look at the picture there. The government can't, we can't afford to do it for them. They'll have to put the money up, and now we could give them a little tax break, I'm sure if we decided to, to help push that along a little. If we can give industries a totally free tax 25, 20 years or so because they're supposed to hire 400 people or 600 or whatever, then we certainly could give the individual a small tax break as well, which would make it worthwhile. We've been speaking with Roy Benefil, a candidate for Senate District 50 here in Northeast Georgia. Roy, the best of luck to you in this election. Thank you, sir. This is now Habersham, and now we're visiting with John Wilkinson, incumbent and Senate candidate for District 50. Welcome, John, to now Habersham. Thank you very much. Well, let's start off talking about your formal education. Tell us a little bit about your classroom experiences uh, 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 and your education up to this point. Well, I grew up on a small farm in Stevens County, where I still live. I attended the public schools of Stevens County, and after graduation, I moved on to Athens and I have two degrees from the University of Georgia, a Bachelor of Science in Agriculture and then a Master's in Education. And uh, because there's so many other things you've learned in your life that really have prepared you as not only in the past as Senator but the, the coming election as well, tell us a little about, about your experiences that have prepared you in life, either uh, jobs you've had or other activities you do that make, would make you a great Senator. 
Well, I was a classroom teacher for six years, and uh, I just have a great appreciation for the teachers in our state and in this district. I know sometimes I hear people who want to be critical of our education system, and I always ask them, how long has it been since you've been in a classroom? Because I think if they'll go in a classroom and see the hard work that our teachers do, they'll have a lot more appreciation for the job they do. So I had that six years of classroom experience, and then I worked on the state agriculture education staff for 26 years. I was executive secretary of the Georgia FFA Association. I served as the state FFA advisor and the program manager for agriculture education in our state. And I think one of the unique things that that gave me the opportunity to do, we have 181 school systems in our state. And over 26 years, I visited in every system at least one time. So that gave me a good perspective when we're dealing with issues on education. In Atlanta, I can draw on that experience when someone says something about one of those counties across the state. I have the personal experience from being there many times knowing a lot of the teachers or administrators in those counties. Let's talk a little bit about your uh, work in the Senate uh, in Georgia. You've been on the Agriculture Committee, the Appropriations Committee, and I guess Education Committee that, that I was able to, to find. Talk a little bit about agriculture in Georgia, it's, and particularly up in Northeast Georgia, it's a very important part of our lives. I'll tell you, a lot of times the uh, farmers do such a great job that they kind of get taken for granted. But it's a wonderful thing that one farmer in America can produce enough food for to feed over 100 people. And that really makes the lifestyle that we have possible because that frees up 99 other people to do other things. But we're going to have to eat before we do anything else. Another thing that a lot of people don't realize, agriculture is the biggest business in our state. It's a $74 billion business in our state's economy. And we have a lot of agriculture in Northeast Georgia. Uh, we're the leader in poultry production in the state and poultry is a $32 billion part of that $74 billion uh, part of the agriculture industry. You know, we have the busiest airport in the world in Atlanta and we have the fourth busiest container port in the United States at Savannah. And another thing, a lot of people don't realize that the biggest export going out of Savannah is poultry, and a lot of that poultry comes from Northeast Georgia. John, not everybody might understand what the Appropriations Committee does in the uh, Senate, and uh, that's a pretty important position. Can you tell us a little bit about how uh, Northeast Georgia is at an advantage for having you uh, on that committee? When we look at the budget every year, of course, the governor gives us a recommended budget and then it goes to the House for approval and then it comes to the Senate. And uh, it, I think it does give us an advantage that I sit down at the table and have an opportunity to look at the budget. For instance, this past year, when we were looking at bond money, we had some available and, of course, North Georgia Technical College, uh, the campus in Clarksville is the oldest campus in the technical college system in the state. And they've got some older buildings that need updating. Manufacturing has changed and we want to be on the leading edge of teaching our students. So I was able to help with the help of Representative Gasway and Representative Rogers. We worked together, but we were able to get a little bit over $12 million for campus expansion on the Clarksville campus. And I think that's one example of how uh, working on the Appropriations Committee was good for our district. Mm -hmm. Let's move to some issues. Um, I think uh, I teach journalism at Georgia State and also teach media and culture, and there is no secret that immigration is an issue across the entire country, but really so in places like California, Texas, uh, Georgia, places where we rely a great deal on Hispanic labor. Uh, the the uh, Georgia legislature has not been particularly friendly, particularly to students who might be qualified to attend one of the top four. Uh, universities and for instance I have a godson I raise and he had a 4.0 from Norcross High School and was the star soccer player and he applied to where I teach Georgia State but was not allowed to attend there. Instead he went to Texas Christian University on a full scholarship. We're making it very difficult for the children of some of these families who work for minimum wage, who've worked for minimum wage for many decades, uh, they're here, and we've not done very much to try to find a way to solve the immigration problem. And we all know, first we're going to build a wall or close the border. And you know, and that, that's a good answer, and we hear that a lot in the media. That does not solve the problem of the people who are here. 
and a lot of people will say, well, maybe they shouldn't have come here. That's true too, but if you, if you take all the undocumented people out of Georgia, we have a real problem with the tax base and we have a real problem with filling the labor jobs. Are you prepared to do something in Georgia to solve this problem? I think you've done, I really feel that you've done an excellent uh, job explaining the scenario and some of the challenges that we're facing. I'm not telling you, you know, if I could give you an answer to solve that today, I probably wouldn't be sitting here running for the state senate. But I will give you some of my thoughts on that and some of the factors I take into consideration when I have to cast a vote. There is a legal way to come to this country. And many people have immigrated to this country and followed that process and done so legally. If we have a legal avenue in place, we need to follow the law and go through the process and become citizens legally. Now, I know there are a lot of extenuating circumstances and young people who come here and don't have the opportunity to make, make that choice. But another thing I would say, and I'm not trying to pass a buck, but this really is a federal issue. This is something that the federal government should have dealt with, and they have not dealt with it. And I think that's one of the reasons that uh, some of the legislators in Georgia, including myself, have felt like we needed to look at it and do some things. Because every person who's living in our state, we have certain responsibilities and financial considerations that go into that. Now, one thing, looking at the perspective from chairing the Ag Committee, that we really need to do, we need a temporary worker permit that will work and we don't have one of those right now. And that's another federal issue. But we need a way that people can come into the country legally and do the job they need to do and then legally leave. That would be better for the workers and it would be better for everyone concerned. So we have some real challenges there. But I think our goal ought to be coming up with something that's fair and something that's legal and then going by the law. Um, I, you and I have several things in common. We're both educators, we're both farmers of sorts, and I, I grow coffee, which is uh, it's the only coffee project in the United States outside of Hawaii, right here in Habersham County. Uh, but when I tried to bring someone here from Honduras uh, to be an expert in how to germinate the seeds and how to uh, keep the plants healthy, it became very difficult. There is no one here who knows how to do that and it became very difficult to get a visa for that. So I, th I think you're right. I think we, we, the federal government is not working very hard to solve the problem for people we need for like uh, the Vidalia onions or the peanut crops or peaches and apples. Uh, it just seems like it maybe is uh, much more difficult than it ought to be. I, I agree with you, mm -hmm. and, and we need to work on, work on that. Mm -hmm. You know, you've been in this office for some time. Uh, a lot of people may not know you. Tell us a little bit about activities you enjoy, um, clubs or organizations you're involved with, how you spend your spare time, so that, uh, John, those who don't know you might get to know you a little better. Well, I retired after 32 years in agriculture education, and I felt like because of my life experiences that I had, I could uh, serve effectively in this office. I would like to think that I have for the past four years. Uh, I've been married to my wife, Debbie, for 41 years. We have two adult children, and we have five grandchildren. So that's how I spend a, a lot of my time. That's one of the real joys of my life, my 12-year-old grandson, is uh, plays Little League Baseball, and I really enjoy going to his Little League Baseball games. My 10-year-old grandson plays soccer. I have two granddaughters, and they are uh, gymnastics and dance competition. So at this point in my life, I'm just really, uh, I think sometimes when you raise your children, maybe I felt like they were going to be young forever, and, and I had plenty of time to do things if I put it off today. But I think when you start having grandchildren, you, you realize that your time's going to be limited. They're going to grow up someday. So the spare time I have, I really enjoy spending it with my family and with my grandchildren and, and traveling. And of course, I, my wife and I and my family were active members of Tate's Creek Baptist Church. and. Uh, that's a very important uh, part of our life, our spiritual life, and I'm the uh, Sunday school superintendent and uh, deacon at Tate's Creek, so that, that's a big part of our life also. So, uh, 
You know, that's one of the reasons that I wanted to run for state senate. I, I wanted my grandchildren to be able to grow up in a northeast Georgia that they could be proud of and where they could get a good job and where they could raise their families. We've been speaking with John Wilkinson, incumbent and a candidate for Senate uh, District 50 here in northeast Georgia. John, good luck to you. Thank you. We hope you've benefited from these interviews sponsored by Now Habersham. And we want to remind you, be sure to vote May 24th.